think it's free. It is free. But I think you have to sign up. Yeah. And of course, I'm on there. Mr. Ryan Blue. Uh, no, you don't. Discover the magazines. Okay. So what do we want to do is we want to factor this, all right? And I think that's all I said, all right? Just factor your trinomial. So the one important thing that I want to remember about trinomials is I'm going to use ax squared plus bx plus c, all right? So that's telling me it's a trinomial in a quadratic form. So a quick little just kind of tip, and like I said, I'm going to kind of make this like a straightforward, follow this path, solving your trinomials to make sure it's factorable. James. All right, so we want to follow this path, and it's just a very straightforward way to understand how to do factoring when you have your coefficient of a is greater than one. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of create what we'll call like the diamond, and I'm going to multiply a times c and b. All right, if you guys can just kind of remember this, this is a very way, like foolproof way to always check. So I do a times c, six times negative ten, which would be a negative sixty, and then my um, b is a negative seven. All right, so then I need to look at this and I see, all right, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 60, but then add to give me a negative seven? So you can look at all the factors of negative 60. All right, you could have negative, um, well, it's gonna be negative 60, so it'd be negative 60 and one, or it could be negative one and 60, right? But I'm just gonna do one set. So you could do uh, negative six times 10. You could do negative 12, Times five. Divide it here. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, you could do negative fifteen, four, negative thirty and two, and five. Huh? Five, and you can do negative three and twenty, right? Now, obviously, you could all I could swap these, right? These could all be negative, and these could be positive, right? So there's a lot of possibilities. However, just look at the numbers. What numbers have a difference of seven? And don't worry about the plus or minus. But what numbers have a difference of seven? Those don't. Those have a difference of four. Those have a difference of eleven. Difference of eighteen. Difference of seventeen. But you can see these two have a difference of seven, right? So it either could be negative seven and five or 12 and negative 5, right? Well, 12 times. When you look at this, which two of these added up give me a negative 7? And yes, that is my solution, negative 12 and 5. So I can write negative 12 and 5, right? Now, everybody's so used to always saying, oh, these are your two answers, x minus 12 and x plus 5, right? That's what everybody gets mixed up because before, when we saw when their a was one, that's what we did. We just took these two numbers and we said x minus twelve and x, you know, x plus five. The problem with that is x times x does not give you a six a squared. So there's a couple ways we can do this, and I'll do it two different ways. And you guys can determine which way is confusing and which way makes sense. Okay, one way is we can rewrite this formula with a, um, what was it, a, a 12a plus 5a minus 10. So instead of writing a negative 7a, we could write it like this, all right? The other way you could do it is what we call the box method. Where you take your a, which is 6a a squared, you take your c, which is negative 10, they have 12a and plus 5a. Let me write a plus. Okay? So there's two different ways we can kind of do this. You're really doing essentially the same thing. This is a way just to organize it differently. But all I did was I rewrote my middle term as two different ways. So one way I could do for this way, the reason why I'm doing this is factor by grouping, right? Group the first two terms. Group the first two terms and I say, what can I take out of here? And you can say, well, you can factor out a, uh, a 6a, right? 6a, you're left with a um, minus 2. And then here, I can factor out a 5, and I'm left with a minus 2. Right? And then, um, uh, let's 
let's see here. Then from here, you can factor out an a minus 2 times a, 6a minus 5. So that would be your two factors. Okay? Over here, how do I solve it from here? Well, it's pretty much the exact same thing. Remember, when you're doing the box, you want to say, what two numbers multiply to give me you know, my, what's inside my box? So what two numbers multiply to give me 6a times 2? Now, easily you could say, well, 3 and 2 work, right? Well, if I put a 2 there, 2 times what gives you 5? That's going to be a fraction, right? What if I put a 3 there? 3 times something is going to 3 times a number, a fraction is going to give you 5, right? So we're going to have to come up with new numbers. How about if we did 6a times a? Well, that will work because a times what gives you 5a? 5, right? Um, that's that's right. That's what? When you, when you multiply negative, negative 5 and negative 2 together, it doesn't equal negative anything. I mean, negative 10 equals positive 10. Where did you get so positive it's got to be a plus 5 and then a minus Are you talking about in here? Yes. Yeah, it was supposed to be a plus 5. Where am I looking? Where did I miss that? Right by your finger. It's a plus oh, five. that's a plus 5. Yes, thank you. Yeah, 6a, that's a plus 5. Thank you. Because, that makes sense, because a times what gives you 5a? That's 5a, right? And then over here, 6a times what gives you negative 12? Well, that's a negative 2. And then you can see, here are my two factors. Okay, so that's two different ways to factor a trinomial when you have a is greater than 1. Yay. And you guys have a lot of practice to practice that method.